Al-Qaeda Central, Al-Qaeda, Osama bin Laden, Ayman Sawahiri, has never changed. Target or world view. The far enemy has, it has been consistent. The far enemy meaning the United States, States. of America and US European allies. Right. The strategic goal of ISIS continues to be the near enemy. What the near enemy means, establishing Dawla Islamiyah or Islamic State in Iraq and Syria and Saudi Arabia. So this is the strategic goal. This is a major conceptual difference between Al-Qaeda Central and ISIS. What has changed in the past year is that ISIS has devoted more and more resources to the far enemy. Attacks in Paris, attacks mm -hmm. in Belgium, mm -hmm. attacks in California, now in Orlando. In fact, just 10 days ago, the second command of ISIS, Abu Muhammad al-Adnani, mm -hmm. is a very powerful figure. Yes. Abu Muhammad al-Adnani is as powerful as, Ab as Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the leader of ISIS. Yes. He has called on ISIS followers worldwide to attack Westerners, in particular civilians, and in particular children. The idea is to lead, the idea is to terrorize, and the reason why, you might say, why the far enemy? ISIS is losing in Iraq and Syria, losing big times, mm -hmm. even though it's not the beginning of the end. And these attacks are, I mean, think about it. I mean, they, they're the powerful attacks. All of us now are talking about the Orlando massacre, in which, you know, 50 innocent right. Americans were killed, and another 50, almost 50, were injured. In fact, the Orlando killer, he basically pledged allegiance to ISIS while he was doing the killing. killing right. So even though we have evidence about the Orlando, uh, you know, his name is Omar Mateen, that he was not directly, directly, according to President Obama and the intelligence services, he was not directed by ISIS directly, he basically was homegrown radicalized, self-radicalized, accepting the ideology. And, and, and this is a very important point. So ISIS is not just one monolith. Right. ISIS' strategic goal is on Iraq and Syria and neighboring countries, but at the same time, it has units now designed and prioritized attacks mm -hmm. against Western targets, because these attacks are force multipliers, divert attention from the losses in Iraq and Syria, appeals to recruiters. What Muhammad, Abu, Abu, Muhammad al-Adnani and Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi are saying, we are not losing, Green. we are yes. standing up. That's and right. young man, sadly, young man and woman, whether you're talking about Belgium or France or California and Orlando, buy into this, this ideology. I mean, think of Omar Mateen, the uh, killer in Orlando. Right. He, I mean, think of his portfolio. A tormented man, right. a deluded man, a troubled soul, violent, racist, xenophobe. Violent and toward his wife. Absolutely, against his wife. Even against his father him. disowned him. Even his, I mean, so this kind of ideology, these young troubled souls are looking for an anchor. And what ISIS says, come and join the Islamic State. In fact, the Islamic State has already taken responsibility Yes. for the attack okay. in Orlando, even though the Islamic State itself, or Daesh, or ISIS, did not directly, you know, order uh, Omar Mateen to carry out the attack in Orlando. So there are multiple, multiple, really, units, multiple groups, multiple factions. And sadly, if you ask me, we should basically have resilience. My take on it, and this is not about scaring the audience, the more ISIS loses in Iraq and Syria, right. the more That's attacks we should point. expect, I mean, overseas. The question is not if ISIS will try would, to attack, I mean, Western targets, the question capacity. Does it have the capacity? capacity? As we've seen, I mean, in Orlando, you have some troubled individuals, some deluded uh, souls who buy into this ideology and take action into their own hands. This is the kind of lone wolf or basically self-radicalized or home-grown uh, terrorists. And also 